This video is sponsored by Rider Justice Motorcycle Lawyers. And look at this road, this feat of engineering winding its way around the side of the cliffs here next to the ocean. Welcome to the Motorcycle Travel Channel. I'm Sterling, and this is my channel about adventure motorcycle travel, touring, and camping. In this episode, I'm going to show you what it's like to ride a motorcycle down the Pacific Coast Highway. We'll travel down a beautiful road and see some pretty cool things along the way. If you like motorcycling next to the ocean, you're going to love this episode. In the afternoon, I'll head inland to Napa Valley and see if I can't find a place to camp. It's a holiday weekend, so it could be a little tricky. And it's really hot, so camping next to a lake would be ideal. I know it's a lot to ask for, but stick with me and let's see what happens. So I woke up here at my hotel this morning in Fort Bragg, California. After four nights of motorcycle camping, the lost coast of Northern California. Today I want to have a really smooth, easy ride down the California coastline. It's a little bit foggy out. I'm not sure when that's going to burn off, but hopefully we'll get some ocean views. And I'll get a chance to show you what it's like to ride a motorcycle down the Pacific Coast Highway. So stick around for this adventure. So I left Fort Bragg at about 10 o'clock this morning, heading south on the Pacific Coast Highway. An epic, legendary motorcycling road here in the United States. Nice sections of twisting pavement next to the water like this one. This is the uh, Navarro River, I believe it's called. I just stopped to take the first pictures of the day. Let's get back on the bike and head down the road. The early morning fog really makes it moody and atmospheric to be riding down the road. I suspect that'll burn off pretty quickly. The ocean is right down here. This is really such a beautiful experience to be riding down Highway 1 in the, the mist like this. It's kind of a, a picture-perfect morning of summer motorcycling in coastal California. I mean, look at this road. There's nobody on it. It's just beautiful. I really hope that this looks good in the helmet camera with these lighting conditions and this fog rolling in off the ocean. I'm just letting the helmet camera roll a little bit because this could be really beautiful. There's no other cars. The road is nice, good atmospheric conditions. Ooh, so beautiful down there. Well, I'm not traveling down the rugged and remote backcountry roads that I often travel on. This is a different kind of motorcycling. This is on the pavement on a highway, so it's Highway 1 heading down the coast. And it's a different kind of delight. Let me tell you, riding in the fog and the mist this morning, some of those scenes that I've been riding through have been some of the most sensual, beautiful, mystical roads that I've been on in a long time. I'm stopping every so often at a roadside pullout like this one to see what kind of views I can take in of the ocean. The real thrill today is just riding down these country roads. I just went through a cute little town called Pointe Reina and I'm about 128 miles north of San Francisco. Fog is starting to burn off a bit. Still traveling on these beautiful paved country roads, Highway 1. Just past a little town called Gualala, the Gualala River. 
This looks like a good place to stop at the Stewart's Point store. Got parking for me right here. Well, I stopped here on the side of the road at a place called Stewart's Point store. It's a bakery and a cafe and one of those charming little stores that I hope to find along the way on a trip like this. A place that has just the right amount of things that I might need for my traveling adventure. I like when I can find these single serving portions of frozen meat. That's ideal for motorcycle camping. They had a shelf with just the right amount of small bottles of liquor, some really old antique coolers with other alcoholic beverages inside of them. I love these little general stores, especially ones that have a bakery and a cafe attached to them. back on the road here, leave Stewart's Point store behind, and see what lies up ahead on this coastal journey down California. Well, that was a really refreshing stop. I really enjoyed that. Just a, a chance to stop on a, a beautiful afternoon at a small bakery and cafe, grab a latte and a slice of fresh carrot cake, and just take in some of this amazing beautiful scenery along the, the coastal highway here in California. gentle and relaxed kind of motorcycling today. It's motorcycle touring. Beautiful country road winding along the coast with mist still coming in from the ocean. Now I'm coming down into Ocean Cove and if you look closely up ahead here, I'll go kind of slow, you can see where a part of the highway has kind of collapsed down into the ocean. Erosion destroys the highways here along the coast of California. It's a continual effort to keep them maintained and safe, but here it is right here on the right. Part of the highway is just sort of eroded down into the ocean right here. Looks like there's a little store and a campground, some other motorcyclists here. This is just about a half a mile south of Ocean Cove. Maybe that's the cove right there. I'm taking the view right here. Oh yeah, beautiful. Road construction on Highway 1, rebuilding the road, a continual affair. Part of the joy of riding on a road like this is that it's so dynamic. The road itself is an ever-changing journey of twists and turns, and then things to see along the way. Hidden views of the ocean, big expansive views of the ocean, countryside like we're in right now. So many different things to see along the way on a road like this, and then the road itself is also very dynamic. That's what makes a road like this really fun for motorcyclists. There's hawks flying in the air or some other, maybe seabirds of some sort. So many different types of flora and fauna, the plants and the flowers and the trees. You see some, of course, big, modern, probably very expensive homes 
along the ocean and but every now and then you see these old old houses and shacks left over from a long time ago and you know that the price of real estate here has to be really expensive even for just a shack like that perched on a cliffside overlooking a cove what a beautiful thing I'll never make it anywhere if I keep stopping to take pictures but this is just so picturesque breathtaking in its beauty around every corner another vista equally as impressive as the last sometimes even more so Look at this road, this feat of engineering, winding its way around the side of the cliffs here next to the ocean. Look at that, how beautiful. Well, this is a pretty impressive stretch of the highway right here. I forgot what an impressive journey this Highway 1 is north of San Francisco. It's been a long time since I've been on this road. This is a big section of construction along the highway. All the road crews are out in full effect, repairing the road here as it's washed itself down the cliffside. There we can see off in the distance the highway down below as it twists its way down the side of these coastal mountains. Curve after curve after curve. my drone in the air and was flying it around and I noticed that it was causing a little havoc with the bird community out here and no sooner had I returned it to the shore and landed it than I was approached by a woman named Vicky who explained to me that I shouldn't be flying there because it it really bothers the nesting seabird community and so I stopped flying my drone I didn't have any issues with that whatsoever the right thing to do and she explained that to me and I'm explaining it to you. And Vicki told me about this section of the old highway. A lot of houses have fallen into the water right here. You can see the remains of uh, the foundations and they've fallen down there into the water. We'll take a look here. Yeah you can see the ruins and the remains of houses that were once here. Somebody once lived here. Somebody's bedroom was here. Their kitchen was here. Now it's down there in the ocean. There's somebody's house that's going to be next. And here's the new highway, the new bridge. Looks like the road is closed, so we'll turn around here. And this is Bodega Bay. We're on the Sonoma coast. And now the coastal highway, highway number one, has turned inland. We're in Sonoma County. This is the area around Napa, the famous wine growing region of California. And I have to make a choice coming up whether I want to continue on Highway 1 along the coast and go through San Francisco 
or if I want to head inland and ride through Napa Valley and cut a big wide circle around San Francisco. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I think I'll stop and have some lunch, look at a map and make a choice. But right now I'm on some beautiful back country roads, Highway 1 through the countryside. I can't help but find myself turning corners as if they were pages from a John Steinbeck novel. This is Petaluma. I tried making a reservation online to one of the campgrounds in the area, but by the time I got the registration filled out, the last campsite had been taken, and all of the other campgrounds in the area are completely full. So long story short, I don't have a place to camp, and I'm in Sonoma County, hoping to find some BLM land to pitch my tent tonight. I lucked out finding this campsite. Everything in this area is completely full and booked. So I'm gonna get camp set up, take a jump in the lake here, and drink some wine. That turned out to be a fantastic day of riding down the Pacific Coast. From Fort Bragg, up in Northern California, down to Bodega Bay, along the coast with spectacular views of the ocean, the bays, the rocks, the cliffs, the waves, all of that. Just spectacular roads, misty in the morning, clearing up in the afternoon. And then this afternoon's ride into the wine region of California, Napa Valley, the brown hills, the vineyards, to where I'm at tonight, this beautiful campsite on the water. And it's almost 100 degrees inland here, away from the ocean. Quite a contrast from where we started this morning. Tomorrow's breakfast, start out as usual, with some old fashioned vanilla yogurt this time. Tonight's dinner is a no-cook deli meal straight from the cooler. We've got some sriracha mac and cheese, a Brussels sprout salad with bacon, and some Sauvignon Blanc from Dark Horse Winery here in California. my thoughts on this campsite will rate it according to my motorcycle campsite score system 
that I developed. Five categories, either zero points, one point, or two points in each category. Two if it has it, zero if it doesn't, one if it's so-so. Let's start out with beauty. This is a very beautiful location here. We're in the wine country hills next to a lake. I'll give this a two for the beauty. This is as much as a, a person has a right to ask for. Allowability or legality. Well, this is a developed campground. You have to pay to get in here. So if you do that, it's fully legal. So that gets a two. Cost. This was an expensive one. It was forty-eight fifty for the night. I think that's a little bit expensive for a campsite. So I'm going to give that zero points. Privacy. That's debatable. There are quite a few people off in the distance over here and behind me over here. But they seem to be far enough away that they're not really causing me any concern or hindering my filmmaking. But it's not completely private either, so I'll give it a point for privacy. So we're up to five points so far. And the last category is water. I always like to camp next to water to do some cooking, cleaning dishes, washing myself. There's a lot of water here. It gets two points for that. So this campground gets seven points. It's pretty good. I'll take it. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this episode quite a bit. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I appreciate that. We will see you in the next episode down the road. Get back on the ocean and ride down Big Sur.